Hey everyone, I just wanted to show you how to use some publisher uh, given our public publisher software to make a test and how to upload it to Canvas. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, see how that works out. Let's see if this works. Yep, and I can give me the choices that I want. That's so helpful. Uh, let's do hmm. So if I can kill this window, kill this window. All right, looks like it's working now. So I'm gonna open up te exam view test gen, the actual test generator. There's other types of exam view. <clears throat> I wanna, let's say create a new test from scratch. Now let's do using the wizard. That's kind of helpful to show you all right now too. So. I'd, do using the wizard. So I'm going to name this fake test. Next. Now what I do is I go to my bank. It always has one selected, but you can also, of course, navigate around to find the folder with the test banks that your publisher gave you for other textbooks or whatever. But let's say I want to do a test on chapters one, two, and three. I can click on the first one and then hold down the shift key and hit the third one and it'll go ahead and fill in all those. If I want individual chapters, I have to hit down the control key and then I can hit one and then hit three and it just give me one and three and it skip two. So that's what would happen if I use the control as opposed to shift, but using shift to do that, now they select. Notice I could have selected all and that would have taken all the chapters. Now I do next and it gives you the choice. Notice it's got a bunch of multiple choice. Uh, it's got a bunch of multiple, uh, excuse me, true false. And it's got a few completion, a few essays. Maybe I want to make this to have, uh, let's say, four true false, and let's say 21. Let's now let's say 20 multiple choice. So now I hit next, and this is going to give me a total of 24. So what it basically did was took uh roughly a third of 20 out of chapter one a third of 20 out of chapter two and a third of 20 out of chapter three and then a third of four so on and so forth okay so now i have a bunch of questions here i think this is okay because i'm not showing you the actual answers so i don't have to worry about uh putting that on line for the video for you folks to see but now if i want to uh go ahead and export this to canvas what i do is i first save it as a test and i usually use a smart useful name like uh, you know test one chapter one through three so i'll say t1 chp one two three but now i give it an indicator or remind me that it's just a test and the dot tst would work but i could also put my indicator that this one was from the book seeds so i'll say seeds uh 11th and i'll say it's spring 2020. So now I've got the addition in there and all that good stuff. I know what chapters it covers. I know what book it came from. So I want to inadvertently use a test bank from a textbook we're no longer using or something like that. i just say do uh, save. And now generally it's automatically going to save it to a test folder within uh, exam view setup. And I don't like that. I usually like to sell, uh, send it somewhere on my desktop or, some, or one of my other files. So I'll do uh, desktop. Then when I get to desktop, I can look at, uh, this is, I'm using my daughter's computer, so I have a place called Daddy's Test, and I can just meander through there and find wherever I want. I want to put it right here, and I put 11th edition, I think it might have been 12th edition, doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't use that book anymore. So now I hit save, and it's now saved as a .tst, so I know it's a test file. The downside is the software test gen, which is given to us from Pearson, is also a .tst file, so the uh, Operate system gets kind of confused about which one it is, so you have to tell it open with as opposed to just open when you go to open it. This can't be used right now though by Canvas. So what I have to do now is either I go up here and go file export, or I can right click on it, and it gives me a chance a choice to export. Or it used to it's currently not doing that. Don't know why. Anyways, I'm gonna do this left click. Nope. Okay, so I do file export. I might be thinking of the other software. 
Uh, now, you can do exam view chest bank. That's really helpful. Like if you want to make this a bank, so that maybe you want to use the exact same questions from previous tests for the final. And this was test one. Uh, if you make it a bank, then later you can take all the banks you've made from the whole semester and use those as bank to make a new test. And that'll be your final exam. It's randomized, but it's only questions uh, that you used in previous tests. But in this case, notice I don't have a choice for Canvas up here. Uh, Canvas, I think, will take XML, but I know for a fact it'll take the latest Blackboard. So I'm going to export it as a Blackboard 7.1 to 9.0. Notice there's use uh, younger ones, but it takes the latest, so I'm going to take it. So I do that. Notice it's going to make the name. Uh, normally, I'd make the name the exact same name that I had. So I'm going to say T1 uh, chapters 1 through 3. The only thing is I want to remove that .tst, but that is the name that I want to use. So, and I'm going to use it again, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and use it for later. So now I hit save, and it's going to actually uh, zip it up and compress it, and then we can upload it to Canvas. So I hit save, and right here it'll ask for a name, so I'm going to put that same name that I'd already typed in the directory name, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you have to fill these in. So. Might as well do it with the same thing so there's no confusion. <clears throat> now I've got that file done. I can go back here and look in my folder. I'm going to pull up uh, nope, any stuff. I think daddy stuff is going to open. There it is. Okay, daddy's tests, which is where I put it. And you can see here's test one. Uh, Chapters one, two, three, seeds, that's the test. And that's what you open with when you want to make changes to it. Uh, but if you want to upload it, you have to have this .zip file. So now that's there. Now all I have to do is open up uh, Canvas, which is not this window. It's this window. So I'm going to Canvas. I'll open up any random course. Let's say this one right here. Now, here's the weird part. Uh, you can't just upload it as a file. I mean, you can to keep for later and stuff, but your your file size or your file space will run out pretty quickly. So what I do is uh, you actually just want to go ahead and not use that as a storage place. Just uh, go ahead and upload it so we can use it. So what we do is we click on settings. And you see over here on settings, there's an option to import course content. That's what we're going to do. So I click import course content. You have to tell it what type. This is where I tell it it's a blackboard. Notice it goes six, seven, eight, and nine, and mine was seven to nine. So this works for that. But you can see the other type it takes. It takes Moodle. Uh, it takes, I uh, thought it took XML. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it also takes older Blackboard, Angel, Canvas. I guess it doesn't take XML, but I thought that's what it did. But I'm going to report it as a Blackboard document. It'll know to automatically unzip it and everything. Now I choose the actual file. Uh, we know where we put it. That's it right there. I click on that. I hit open. And now I'll do is select all content. I don't mess with these things because it'll actually put it in other things. And I hit import. It usually doesn't take too long to upload the actual uh, test. So now let me show you how to actually make a quiz from that. And there's actually a lot of neat things where you can actually choose banks at random. So I'll go to click on quizzes over here. Now I'm going to tell it to create a quiz. And I'm going to call this fake test. So I remember it. And now you can set things like allow multiple temps. If you do click that, notice it gives you choices of to choose the highest, the latest, or the average. That's kind of nice. You can limit the number. You can put any number. Or if you leave it like this, it'll take the uh, 
the math settings, it'll take the highest out of all of them and the student can take it an infinite number of times. Uh, I never, ever, 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 ever let them see the correct answers. We only have a limited number of banks uh, and these things are making it on the internet anyway, so you might as well not. So I always at least remove that. Uh, I do not recommend shuffling answers because a lot of times you have it referring to, you know, all of the above and it doesn't work out. I do use time limits for my online tests and I give my students like an average of 30 to 45 seconds per question so you can type this and then put it in there. And it does for the, all of them unless you restrict it per question. But basically it just takes the average time sort of, okay? Uh, so you could select one question at a time. You could give them, it has to require them to give you an access code, like a password. So if it's set up for one particular student, you might want to give that one particular student a password and nobody else, and nobody else can mess up their score. Uh, you, could, you generally just set it to everyone, but you might have to make two, one for uh, online students and then one for uh, students that have accommodations. So you can make one call it accommodation test and then you'd set it instead of for everyone, you just choose the individual students. You can put a due date available from and available to. I did just recently find out that if you put it available from 9.30 to say 10, because you don't want people starting it too late, it'll literally stop it at 10 o'clock so they can't even finish it. So be careful with using that. Uh, right here, you could go ahead and put save or save and publish, but I'm gonna show you how to put the questions in. So I'll roll back up to the top, click on questions. Now, if you wanted to just put all that in as a test, then you just do, in, in other words, you don't want to change the questions. You want everybody to take the exact same test. Then you just do find questions and you go down here and find your bank. It should be called test one, chapter one to three seeds like that. And then you just select all. And all these will be checked. Eventually, there it is. Now you scroll down to the bottom. If you wanted to do that, you say add questions. And now you'll see you have 24 questions. But let's say you actually wanted 30 questions, and you wanted out of the 20, uh, out of the 30, you wanted six of them to be at random, chosen at random. Now you can add some more questions. So you can scroll down here, and you say add a new question group, or you could add an individual question if you wanted to. That would be fine. Like I use that for a, a honor pledge and stuff like that. But you could just do new question group, and this is kind of new. So you could take let's say two chapter, uh, two questions at random. You can change the points here, by the way, too, if you want it to be a 100 point test, that works nicely. And now you just link to the question bank. So let's say I want uh, test one without maths or essay. That's another bank I made up from another textbook. We'll just do it because I'm gonna throw this test away anyways. So I'll say select bank. And then you have to, have to, have to hit correct, create group. If you don't, it'll just leave that off. So if I hit save right now, it's not gonna count it. So I gotta hit say, uh, create group. So that's got two of the six. I can grab another chapter. Maybe I wanna do chapter two. I'll put two more questions in there. See what I did when I hit create group, it just screws everything up. So you kill that. Uh, you want a new question, again, two and then you want to link question to a bank. So I'm going to choose chapter two this time, select bank. And again, hit create group. And then finally, I'm going to do the last one, two more questions, create a linked question. Let's do chapter three and hit select bank. And again, I have to hit create group. Now I'll just do uh, save and publish. And the test is ready to go. So if you go back and look in quizzes, you'll see it there. So there's the fake test, 30 points, 30 questions. It automatically knows that that's the standard. So it's gonna count as 100 unless you weight it by points in the actual uh, grade book. Now, if I wanna actually post the test to a module, uh, all you have to do is go down here, click on modules. And let's say I want to do it in the third module or something like that. All I have to do is go here. I'm going to do it that module. Let's say here because I'm going to erase it in a second. I had, uh, that, and I don't want an assignment. I actually want a quiz. So you can see all my old quizzes that I put up here. I look up, there's fake test. And I just hit add item. And that's it. So all you have to do to make a test.
So now I'm going to stop the share. And I think you're now in a position where you can uh, actually make your own test with the test, uh, the exam view test generator software, and then you can import it to Canvas.